income statement shows that what all i have earned by way of revenues whatever expenses i have incurred for attaining that revenue and profit is what profit is whatever the income i have earned the less expenses which i have incurred to attain that and the residual value is the profit this is one of the standardized format of or a pro forma of income statement where we will say is that the net sales are there other operating income is there total income for example if i am in the business of steel so selling the steel will be my net sales but in the process of making steel i uh, there is also a production of a scrap or a slag so that come part comes the part of the other operating income so in order to produce steel what all expenses i have made for example i have consumed raw materials like coal iron ore i have uh, employed labor and employees there are various manufacturing overheads like factory overheads etc we need a lot of power to do this so these are the major headings then of course there would also be a selling and administration expenses like marketing of my my steel advertisement expenditures etc which also part of this one so what we come uh, after deducting these expenses would be the ebitda which is earning before interest tax depreciation and amortizations which shows what is my profit of a uh, company from there we deduct depreciation and amortizations which is a non cash charge which is the wear and tear of my tangible and intangible assets once i reduce that then what i get is the operating profits wherein from i have to repay the interest on the loans which have been taken uh, and uh, lastly the tax so this is nothing but profit and loss account which indicates how the revenue is earned how the expenses in our is earned and uh after deducting the expenses from the revenue what is finally flowing into the owner's pockets in the form of profits generally in a regular uh, common parlance sales or revenues is referred as top line and profit and net earning is bottom line please mind uh, here that higher revenue may not necessarily leads to higher profit okay pro forma of a balance sheet balance sheet in very simple terms is the statement of assets and liabilities say or we can say that it shows uh, what are the sources and applications of the fund sources of the funds are mainly under categorized under two heading what is the fund which has been put in by the owners of the company which is called owners fund which includes my capital contributions in the business in the form of equity share capital plus whatever the retained earnings over the past few uh, past years which have been reinvested in the business the other main part would be the borrowed funds where i have borrowed funds from uh, say the venture holders or say banking industries or short term loans so these are the major sources of the funds and how these sources of the funds is utilized in the business is the other part which is applications of the fund mainly the overall the capital or the funds are either used for purchasing fixed assets like building land plant and machinery etc or i may have invested this funds in some investments which may be related to the operations of the company or which may be related not related to operations of the uh, uh, company which will be shown as current investments and non current investments and then a large part of my funds are also used for uh, day to day operations of the business in terms of current assets mainly inventory uh, debtors uh, work in progress uh, cash and bank balances etc and in this process i also purchase goods on credit which is which is shown as current liabilities and provisions uh there is one more thing which one should see while analyzing the balance sheet uh is the contingent liabilities contingent liabilities are not a part in the uh, 
profit and loss and uh, balance sheet of a company mainly contingent liabilities as the name denotes is the liabilities which are contingent on certain event as of now i am not liable to pay this uh, amount but if there is some event happens which results into an obligation on my part to pay then it is contingent liabilities uh, so contingent liabilities are maybe a probable possible futures liabilities that only arise uh, on the happening of certain event in the futures so contingent liability is uh, does not affect my current balance sheet but it should be disclosed in the notes in the form of futures potential liabilities an example would be say um, legal disputes you would i have seen almost in all balance sheet that there is a uh, legal tax liabilities whether it is income tax or sales tax liabilities say so suppose the tax authorities have demanded you some payment and you feel that this payment is not uh, uh, i am not required to pay this okay so you have contested in say legal uh, court so the liability of you <coughs> paying to the income tax would be contingent on the court order so as long as if the order is in your favorable you are not required to pay but if, if the order is against you then you have to pay similarly if i have given a guarantee for some company or for some other person then i am not liable to pay as long as he is fulfilling his obligation only in the event he defaults then i am liable to pay so contingent liabilities often do not materialize into actual liabilities but it may pose a substantial risk to have a impact on the business of the company futures cash flow remember my friends higher sales does not necessarily leads to higher profit and higher profit does not necessarily leads to the higher cash so there may be two companies okay one company is selling goods in credit and the other company is selling goods in cash so although both of them may have earned the same profit but the cash which is being <coughs> generated by the person who is selling in cash would be higher than the person who is selling in credit there is a saying na a bird in hands is worth more than two in bush so the same concept applies that whatever the profit you have earned it has to actually flow into your pocket okay that's why we have seen in many businesses that uh, if you pay by a credit you have to pay an x amount say 100 rupees but if you pay by cash you may get a cash discount of 2 rupees so what matters in the business is the actual amount of cash which you are earning so how much of the profits you are able to convert it into cash is very very important for example if there you have sold the goods okay and earned a profit of 10 rupees it is an accounting profit but suppose that profit the buyer goes bankrupt or he does not pay you so you may may not receive the cash so that's why people in the financial community looks at the deviations of the profit vis a vis cash uh, very very closely so uh, in cash flow statement also there are three major broad headings one is that what is the cash which i am generating from my operations of the business the other one would be that i am generating cash from the operations of the business but i am utilizing this cash for further capital expansions or increasing my production capacity so that is the cash which i am investing for the purpose of future benefits the other one would be cash flow from financing activities which actually shows that from where i am raising the capital or where are the sources of the funds say i am putting i am running a plant of say 1 million ton and i am in the process of setting up one more million ton plant so for that the amount of investments which would be required for setting one more million ton plant 
can come out from my existing profits or past profits or for that purpose I may need to borrow the capital either from outside or from owners. So that is cash from financing activities. See, till this time we have given you a brief of what is what all financial statements which you look in the annual report or balance sheet of a company. Apart from this, you also have to see the notes and schedules to the accounts which gives you a detailed breakup of individual items. For example, in other expenses, there would be many subheadings which, which is given in the notes and schedules to the account. So once you have seen this, you have to analyze that whether this number is good, improving, this is better or bad. So it gives you just a report card, but now you need to analyze that whether this report card is good, bad or okay. For that purpose, we use uh, uh, an analysis or accounting tools and techniques which we call ratio analysis. As the name defines, ratio analysis is what? Ratio analysis is the analysis of the ratio. Ratio would be what? So, uh, there would be one numerator and one denominator. So, ratio is a study of relationship among fi various financial factors. The financial factors can be both the numerators or denominators can be from PNL account or both of them can come from balance sheet or one may be from balance sheet, one may be from cash flow or there may be a number of permutations and combinations which can be done.